On now to our final conclusions from the second section here, where it was all about striving for and then departing from realism. Week one was about sampling, and the one thing we can expect with samples, and we're not talking about putting them in an instrument and resampling, we're talking about literally dragging and dropping into the timeline. The thing we can expect is that when we hit the play button, it is what it is. Now, that could be an experimental sound, that could be a real world sound, that could be silence, but assuming that you're able to preview that sample in your browser, you know when you bring it in, that's what it's going to play back as, unless some kind of stretching or other sort of algorithm has been applied. But we looked at in this week was using synthesizers and synthesis methods to try and start by recreating the real. And I think we saw that with physical modeling and how with piano tech, you could get something that um, arguably is more realistic than sampling a piano or multi-sampling a piano and it gives you more flexibility and control. But as time went on in the section and as time went on with each of the different methods we looked at, whether that was physical modeling, additive, or you know sample transformation, we've departed from realism and we started to create new and unique sounds. And that was, I think, kind of the main idea of this week. And I hope you were able to follow through on that progression and why I set things up the way I set it up because I wanted to start with getting as real as possible and some of the theories on how to do that with physical modeling, with additive, and then how to take those and go really far with them. So with, for example, the string studio, you can uh, use those physical modeled components and the things that are in there to make experimental sounds. And, And definitely that's true with additive as well. And with sample transformation, taking something that's expected you know, what we preview in the browser, bringing it in and running it through those various components, whatever um, those may be with the instruments that we saw, whether that's, you know, doing more of a micro sampling thing, something granular or wave scan, you know, it's going to get us a a wide variety of results. And, um, and, and this is why I think I enjoy these methods so much is that you don't always know what to expect. I find with especially subtractive synthesis, you know what you're going to get. If you know what you're doing, if you understand the signal flow, you can predict pretty accurately what the sound is going to be at the end. But with some of the instruments we looked at, especially in the uh, optional video with Droney and the Grain Cube, I have no idea what's going to happen with that. And and that's part of the fun. Uh, Speaking of which, the farther you depart from realism or the farther you depart from what people are used to, and that may be subtractive synthesis, the less likely they're going to follow you on that road. Um, And so you have to be a little bit careful of when you use the experimental techniques and understanding what is and isn't appropriate at any given time. So this goes beyond the course and, and goes more into the direction of music production. But the main idea is if you're looking for a lead sound or a bass sound, something that's easily pitched up and down the keyboard, you might want to turn to that subtractive synthesizer. You might want to turn to that multi-sampled instrument. But when you need something that's more experimental, that's more avant-garde, it's maybe a little more out there, that's the time to turn to some of these experimental techniques and not to back down from them because you now understand how they work. You may not know what sounds you're going to get, but at the very least you have an idea of, of what's going on under the hood and can hopefully find something that's going to be suitable for your needs. Look ahead to next week. It's going to be all about modular. So we're going to be using some patch cables. Well, we'll be using virtual patch cables, but we're going to be literally connecting one module to another. And that's why it's signal flow, signal flow, and more signal flow. That's what modular is all about. And it's going to build us a very strong foundation, um, really all the foundation we need for the following week, which is going to be week number four, where we get into, you know, subtractive wavetable and all that sort of stuff that um, most of you are probably or have been expecting from the very beginning. But I'm trying to follow a progression here. And so I think modular is uh, is what makes the most sense for us to look at um, in the next section. So I hope that you join me for that. And I hope that you've learned a lot of new things. Thanks a lot.